Hello there, wonderful internet land. I am Mr. David Brown. I teach at Brooks Composite High School, and this is the third time that I have jumped online and decided to provide some educational content to Brooks Comp students, but also to the rest of the world. So I'm pretty excited. Uh, the link went out to everybody. So this is going to be hopefully a much bigger crowd. I'm really excited. I think it's going to be very interesting going forward. And you can see in the background what we're going to be doing today. Uh, today, I wanted to cover simulation games. And two really good simulation games that I've played recently are Cities Skylines. Uh, I don't have the most recent expansion, so Cities, if you're willing to put some free swag to somebody's way that's teaching using your game, you can send me some DLC and I will enjoy it. If uh, the next game I'm going to be playing, sorry, is going to be Planet Zoo. And I don't have their DLC, so if Planet Zoo wants to send some stuff my way, thank you, Frontier. Love both your games. Um, I would really appreciate that because my daughter also loves playing your game. So we're going to look at simulation games. So our schedule here is we're going to look at creating sims and the complexities that is behind a simulation game. Um, we're going to talk about RPGs, I think, next week, because that'll be a good segue into the complexities behind game development. Um, I hopefully will be teaching a game development class next year at Brooks Composite High School, so I'd like to go into some of these kind of things that go behind the scenes of games that not a lot of people really consider in terms of game development, that there's a lot of things that are more challenging than people realize. Um, having developed a prototype for a game uh, solo, it was very challenging. I also learned a lot of why there are multiple people on the development of a game, because one person doing artwork and sound and then doing all the programming is a huge ordeal, absolutely monumental. So that's something that uh, I would like to talk more about in terms of the complexities of games. So sim games, and then RPGs are huge. Like, oh, it's ridiculous. I learned so much about RPGs and what it takes to build an RPG that I can't even fathom how um, a development team like Larian Studios is going to be making Baldur's Gate 3, and I can understand why it takes so many years to make some of these things, because it's just astronomical uh, in terms of what is provided or what is required. Uh, next piece is we're going to do a little bit of modeling. Um, how are we going to model? So I, what I'd like to do is we'll start, we'll play a little bit, we'll talk about simulation and AI on the surface level. This is stuff that I'm, I, I put this here because this is stuff I want to learn. This is stuff I want to teach my kids, this is stuff about deeper artificial intelligence and how do we program it. We're going to take a look at some of it. We're going to explore together. I think that's, that's going to be a fun, uh, fun thing for me and hopefully a fun thing for my viewers. Uh, jumping into modeling, we're going to do a screenshot of what we play. We're going to pick a couple of buildings and we'll try and build them out. Uh, we won't probably do a very good job because my modeling is eh. So it's something, a skill I'm working hard on. Uh, I have a few students that are absolutely wonderful. But for me, it's a skill I'm working on to provide more support to my students. Um, and hopefully that showcases that lifelong learning approach that we take to education. Um, so we'll model something, but then we'll talk about how does that model get into a game. How did we create, take what model that has been created and put it into something? I think that's going to be more important. How to utilize the objects that we talked about last time I did the stream and put it into an actual game. And the last piece is video capture. So we've done streaming. We've talked about the network part. We've talked about the actual hardware component of streaming from a video production perspective. Uh, notice I have a terrible studio and I'm wearing a headset with a headset microphone. Probably doesn't even sound that good but it's the best that I got. And we talked a little bit about studio setup and some of the important things that you require for a small studio. Um, so for today, we'll talk about capture. And in terms of if you're playing a game and we weren't doing a live stream, we were just doing a recording of things, um, what would that look like? How would that look like? So you could do a podcast type uh, thing. And we'll weave in our My Business course, which is uh, a marketing class and advertising, and talk about brand and the importance of brand prevalence and how do you promote your brand? How do you build your brand um, through video capture? So if you aren't someone who can live stream and doesn't have the setup for live stream, or if you want to supplement your live stream, which is what a lot of popular streamers are doing these days, um, then how do you promote your brand through your capture portion? What do you use your capture portion for? Um, so that's gonna be very important going forward. So 
For those of you that are here, welcome. Again, I am Mr. David Brown, and I teach at Brooks Composite High School. And today, we're playing City Skylines and Planet Zoo. So, without further ado, let's get playing. I'm going to turn on the audio, because the game audio for City Skylines is wonderful. I really enjoy it. Uh, welcome to City Skylines. Uh, again, I don't have the most uh, advanced DLC, but that's okay. We'll start a new game today. Um, I do have most of the DLCs, so that's that makes things nice. Um, let's take a look here. Uh, I really like playing river maps. Um, in terms of resources, it's pretty balanced. It's got good outside connections. Space theme is tropical, so we'll play a tropical one. That looks good. Green Peaks. Ooh, this one looks nice too. Lots of water. Lots of farming. We could do farms. And, and any input from the stream. I don't think there's a lot of people out there. Maybe like two, but hey, it's more than one. I'll take that. Uh, ooh, Marble Canyon looks nice too. Lots of good resources. Resources are fun. Um, they really adjust how you build your city, so that's going to be important. Uh, Bay is tough. There's not a lot of land, so let's not worry about that. Fjord would be kind of neat. Wood Garden. I've, I've, I've done Wood Garden, and it's really tough too, because this doesn't, again, not a lot. Uh, Arid Plains. This is about what Brooks looks like. For those of you that have no clue where Brooks Alberta is, it's not far from Calgary. Uh, it's between Calgary and Medicine Hat, Alberta, and it's flat grasslands. Lots. Well, not a lot of grass. Okay. We're going to do tropical. I like it. This looks neat. This looks neat. I don't change my city name. We're going to be Las Palma. That'll be just fine. Ooh, we can do backwards traffic, but let's not do that because, um, no. No, thank you. Okay, here we go. Uh, it takes a little while to load, it's a bigger game, and this is one of the things where I can dig into the sim piece. So simulation games, why they take so long to load, and if you've played the game like The Sims, or SimCity, or um, even like Farming Simulator 19 or 20, or um, any, or truck, Euro Truck Simulator, I know a lot of people like to play Euro Truck Simulator. Um, sim games usually take a while to load because there's a ton of background information that it is going into this game. So it's going to have to pull a lot of different objects, a lot of different pieces together in order to create the sim. Because the simulation, in this scenario, it's a city building simulation, is it's got to talk about, okay, people, where are they coming from, how are they going to get there, where's the portals, um, what are the starting populations looking like? Uh, what types of people um, in terms of where resources are? They have to make sure they put all the resources in the right spots. So it's building out all those objects. So it takes a really long time to create a simulation. Um, once it's there, it's usually pretty good because it doesn't take long to pull things. It's probably loading a lot into to RAM. If it were my guess, I've not built a simulation game. So if there is a viewer or someone who would like to comment on the building of a simulation game, by all means, please chime in. But in that scenario, I just know behind the scenes there's a lot going on. So, all right, so it's, we need to get started building. So when I play, and I know a lot of people are like, hmm, this is going to be really tough in terms of or they, they think, oh, it's, it's really hard to, to get a city started in City Skylines. I actually don't think so. Um, a conversation I've had with a few people is, oh, you got to do a lot of pre-planning, and that is that is very true. Um, you'll notice the tutorial things pop up, and they're like, okay, build roads, build these types of things. Let's figure out where everything goes first. Like, we can figure out where the wind is going, how our water is going to be used. So we've got just a piece of water here, which makes water collection and, and providing water to our wonderful virtual citizens a challenge because we don't have a lot of water there is a lot of water on the map so when we unlock more of these zones we're gonna have a lot to work with but for now we only have a small chunk so that makes things a little more complicated for us so we're gonna have to make sure that we build over in this way to get there the other problem that we probably will run into here is a sewage dump so we have to be careful of which way this water is going um, I haven't played in a while, so bear with me, but in this circumstance, these are all the wonderful info maps that we want to follow. They are grayed out because I am on pause right now, so let's unpause. See if I can flash it to get it going. No, nope, it's going to want me to build roads first before we get everything started. Um, the information in this game is what makes this, this city sim so much better than a lot of other ones is because it 
really calculates everything. It's like you can see up here, right here, there's a wind direction. And the wind direction is important because A, if we have wind, we can use wind power. If the wind is blowing in a specific direction, our industry needs to make sure that it's going to be not blowing smoke into where we're going. So we're going to need to make a connection first. I know where the water is. It's over here. So we're going to have to run a pipe a long way. Uh, we're going to have to run power a little long way. Uh, I really wish I could see my wind. Okay, it wants me to build a connection first. Which makes sense. I get it. Not a big deal. Oh man, they really start you out different now. Like I said, I haven't played in a while. There's been a few patches. So this is the entrance in, and as you can see, uh, this is what makes it a nice thing, is that I can see that this is the highway, this turns into the entrance street, this is now the exit street. So this one's my exit, and this one's my entrance. So I usually like to build this a little further out, and actually, um, I because I haven't played in a while, I think it's not thinking and I've unlocked a lot, but I'd like I would have liked to pick a much larger roads but it made me start here first we'll we'll fix that later I don't think it'll be a problem that we need to worry about on stream um, we are going to connect our entrance and our exit notice the grid, this is the nice thing is that a lot of things are lined up in grids so you can make traditional city blocks okay so there now it's unlocked my wind, and that's going to be super important. So which direction, how much wind do I have, and which direction is it going? So you'll notice that right here, that we've got wind strength. So wind strength right here is quite strong. And even stronger up on the mountains. But we do have a good elevation plane for some wind power that we can utilize if we really wanted to. So that's going to be super important. It's going to be building that out. Um, they probably gave us the wind because now we're in the building of power and water. Make sure I pause so I don't lose too much money. Um, wind turbines are really effective early, and they can be very effective as you keep going for green power. Um, the hard thing is, is that you have to make sure that you maintain a lot of space for them. You need a lot of wind turbines to make this work, so that's usually a big problem. So our water is here. Now, this is the one thing that you can see. I'm going to bring that down. Let's go back to the water map. Notice I can see the current flow, and it flows in and out. So it's going this way. That's super important because in city skylines, you have to put sewage in. So I know that my sewage dump is going to have to be on this corner, so it flows out into the bay or river, and my water intake is going to have to go on this side. And that's going to be... Uh, that's going to cause some challenges. This is a pretty challenging map to start out with because of where the entrance is and where the water is. But you know what? We'll figure it out. The nice thing is is that because we have this strong wind, um, we'll be able to actually probably power our water and likely our sewer with wind. So that'll be kind of nice. And actually, we've got a pretty good... I might do solo wind. Uh, I definitely am going to put a couple of wind turbines out here for our water. I'm definitely going to put at least a couple here. For there. Also, notice estimated production is 7 uh, megawatts, so if you're someone who teaches science, this is a beautiful thing on a game, because now I have a game that we can talk about megawatts, we can talk about unit conversion, okay, how does this power now get there? I teach Science 30 uh, at Brooks Comp, and we do talk about how does power get to the home, and we talk about circuits and those types of things, so now instantly, right here, if I were to build or have this game in my classroom, we could do this and then we could talk about these things. Like we can have a scenario where it's, okay, establish your power. All right, so that's gonna be very important for me going forward. Um, I think, yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with a lot of wind here. Um, in terms of wind direction, it doesn't look like it's really showing me that anymore. Well, we'll find out when we get pollution all over the place, but uh, I am definitely gonna, so notice, because we've changed the terrain up here, we lost a little production. Okay, so this section here, this is for my sewage, this is for my water, I think that's good. This is going to be for my people, that should be enough power. We can connect our grid using power lines. This is nicely connected. I'm going to make sure that this is part of our grid. Because otherwise, 
that won't work. All right, now we're in a position we've established power. We can do a little bit more. I'm going to now put in some roads for our residential. This is going to be for services, so let's get this going. All right. I'm going to put my industrial section... Actually, I'm going to do residential this side, industrial over here. Let's do that. So, I start out with a pretty big... Don't notice, too. Oh, it looks like I'm running out of money. One of the things that lots of people don't do and early on is loans. Notice I need some people before I get there, but loans is going to be pretty important for me going forward. Um, I think right now I've got a, I've got a pretty good start. I, I hope I've got enough resources and stuff. And if I have to restart, i got to restart. It's not a big deal. Okay, now let's build out some blocks. So remember, this is our exit, so this is actually a nice place. So let's build out some city blocks. Um, city Skylines is very good at giving me an idea of what my block should look like. These are small, but small is fine. We're building a small center to start. Okay, so those are nice blocks. I'm going to extend this out a little bit. And then uh, this is a good spot for industry. Let's build it out. I don't need a lot of this stuff to start. That's usually a mistake a lot of people make, is they think they need a ton of everything. We need tons and tons and tons. This this is actually, I think, I think we're in a pretty good situation, in my opinion. Maybe I'm the worst city skyline player in the entire world. Okay? Um, and then we can have a nice uh, commercial bit, and I think commercial here would be good. That's about as much as I need anyway. Uh, we'll, we, we may utilize some of the space. This is a perfect spot for a downtown area. So when our city grows, we'll have a good downtown area. So again, that pre-planning piece, right? So now let's get our power. Get the power in there. Tells me it's not enough power, but I know they're lying. Stretch that out. I'll probably maneuver some of these later. Because as pop as people come, these spaces will need to be rezoned. So for now, that'll work. That can make sure that the power is there. Not the best thing. Okay, we need water. Alright, water pump station. I don't have enough. Now that's okay. So if you're like, oh my god, Mr. Brown, you screwed it up. Way to go. Nope, this is not a bad thing. I will get here. I don't need water right right away. People will complain about it. But the big thing is they will at least come with power. And then um, hopefully I can get enough people and we can start moving forward. We'll see. We'll see. So I want to monitor this, make sure that power is there. Okay, so power did get established. Notice I'm, I got some residents coming. Okay. Green energy just makes life easier. Um, you, you don't have to worry about pollution, you only worry about noise. So, this is still saying it's disconnected, I'm not really sure. Well, we are only in a, a huge residential piece anyway. It definitely has changed because, like, you used to get loans right away. Oh, wow. another thing we need to make sure we do is we need to absolutely crush taxes. So we need to change our tax rates. Wow, they have definitely changed this game. Used to be able to do loans and stuff right at population zero, so we may have to do a quick restart here. That's fine. Let's speed it up. Okay, now they are definitely complaining about money, but I have people, but no people? Say these skylines, what have you done to my game? Okay. We have to do a restart on this one. This is fine. It just goes this this game, there is a definite challenges to this game. Right? This lets you go a lot deeper into the red. Usually that's like game over right there. Ah, okay. Okay, so they definitely 100% have changed a lot of things. And the fact that uh, people won't move in. So this is interesting. Actually, I really like this. I really like this. I'm going to I'm gonna restart this one. Um, this is super interesting to me because this start, this would have been fine. This would have been a great start. Uh, I think, obviously, in Sunset Harbor Patch, they've adjusted things so that the, the beginning is more challenging. Because usually what happens is the beginning isn't that bad, and then the simulation is... 
it's not really accurate as the start. I would say that that's more accurate is that if a house doesn't have water, no one's going to move into it. So I, I like that. I like the fact that they made that change. And maybe they didn't make a change and I'm just an idiot now. That That's also a thing. I'm okay with it. All right. So let's go back to main menu. I'm not shy about failure on this uh, on this at all. Um, it's a great lesson for students. That would be a huge lesson for students. Think of it from an educator perspective is in the fact of... I just failed. How do I feel about it? I'm okay. I just I know I can restart, and that's the, the that's the things we need in our classrooms is having the ability for this. Uh, I just want to make sure. Oh yeah, we have Garden Rivers. I just want to do the same thing because I think that was uh, it's a very it's a tough map to start, so I think it'll be neat. Um, but that's a big thing in our classrooms is we don't let students fail. If we had games in our rooms, if we taught from games as we have done here, um, and a kid failed they know that they have a second opportunity, right? How do I fix my mistakes so that the next time I don't fail, right? Let's let these high school and, and younger kids go through that so that they can have that experience. And now if we do it through a game, A, it's a lot faster. Notice the map loads a lot quicker because we've already played it. Okay, round two. The tutorials are still popping up because obviously I wasn't good enough before. Okay, let's double check. Okay, no, it definitely wants me to build connections with this. Okay, so that was that was accurate. All right. Okay, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna go just as deep. I want to simplify this a little bit because I think I went a little too far for my industry. I think I went a little too far for my residential as well. Let's go longer blocks here. I think that's that's a better better start right there. I'll do the same thing down here. And if we mimic it, the nice thing is if I have to flip either of these around, this will be good. A commercial. All right, I think we're good there. Okay. Now I know I have to do this because I don't get loans, and I that was the biggest thing. Another thing that either changed or us, I just wasn't impacted by it, was that water was pretty straightforward. Again, I want my water pump over there. Only need one. Don't need any more than that to start. I will need sewage. I'm going to make sure my power is established before I do that. Um, we know we need... I'm going to get, I'm going to put two because when we want to expand this, then it's good to go. Uh, I definitely want... I, I, I don't think I'm going to put extra for sewage now. I'm just going to kind of build my little wind turbine farm up here. Okay, I think we're in a better spot there because we got water, we got good power. Residential, we got a little commercial. There's our industry. And we can expand this residential very quickly, so that's a nice spot to be in. Alright. Let's get this powered. Let's put the rest of the grid up. And let's move That's in. I think that'll be good because this will build first and across the street will be fine. Okay, that's all set. Water. All right. Like you can see there, like water is very expensive. Like that was that was tough. Like this is still this is still going to be tight. I would have preferred to have about five thousand, uh, whatever that is, ready to go. But that gives us water, gives us power, gives us a basic amount. Let's see, let's see, let's see how this goes. I, I am concerned, but we'll see what happens. Speed it up a little bit. This is where the waiting happens now. All right, so it looks like we're doing okay. Um, we have people, so we now have citizens. So that's a good thing. 
Uh, we're in an okay situation um, because zoning doesn't cost anything. We'll be able to do that really quickly. So. Okay, they'll move in with no water, but they'll have issues with sewage. So hopefully we can pump a lot of people in here and then go from there. So right now we just want to really try our best to get people, because once we get to the ability to use a loan, I think I think we'll be fine. We'll be in good shape. Uh oh. So our commercial has an issue. It's not in our water, so that's gonna be a toughie. Let's see if we can make this work. Industry, we're in a good spot. Let's put more industry down. Because people need jobs. So that's a beautiful thing in the simulation world here is that everything is supply and demand. So if there's not enough jobs, people won't move here. So this is what's going on behind the scenes. There's a ton of different calculations is in the fact of like, okay, who... What, what does this place need? And it calculates it over and over and over again. And so it's consistently running against data. And that's an important thing is, is data. And that's where why we're going to talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning in a little bit of how that's going to operate. So. I think 480, that's a, that's a tough, tall task with the amount of budget that you get. This map is tough. I have to do another restart here. Yeah, with the distance we have to travel and the amount of money, like that's this is this is a tough map. This is a real tough map, especially because of where we have to do all of our work with the way the water runs. Because if we if we poison our water supply, people are going to be not happy. All right, third time's the charm. Let's try this. This is again. This is a tough map. This is good. This is good. I've honestly never had this tough of a start in City Skylines, but again, this is probably the map. This is the toughest map that I have played in this start. And I think there's probably a lot of people that are like City Skylines aficionados, and they're like, "Oh man, you're just so awful. This is so easy. I don't know what you're doing. Like, why didn't you do this, this, and this?" Well, it's because I didn't know any better. All right, let's do a better job. Some of it too is I can save a little money by not blocking out my my starting districts. Um, I might be able to just build on one side and then start across the road. There's a lot of different ways of doing this. I think I'm gonna try a scenario to make sure that I build my water only on this side. I'm gonna because putting it out here makes the pipe. I had to spend. Like three thousand dollars, but seventy grand. Like this is, this is a toughie. This is a real toughie. That's okay. Okay, let's build in. Okay, there's our exit road. I still think we're gonna do what we did before. I don't think that was a huge, huge issue. Let's see this. Okay, let's tee this off. Let's see that. Leave it as that. Let's do this. Okay, we'll do that. That'll be fine. So we save a little bit of money there. So be nice. I'm gonna save a little bit of money by. I'm not gonna go as ham uh, in terms of building. So I need. So one thing you want to look at too is how much power this needs. So this only needs 240 kilowatts of power, and my wind turbine generates seven. So I would suggest in that circumstance, I'm building way too many wind turbines. Like the cost, this is six thousand dollars. So this is this one's only nineteen. This is why people like an easier start would be a coal power plant. 
by far. But we do have we have good wind, and I want to take advantage of that. I think that's going to be important. But I think I built too many, so I think we don't need as many. And the nice thing too is I don't have to build the wind farm out there. I think so. If we build three. So in comparison, now this is where the math comes in, right? Now I'm analyzing, right? So so this is also why failure is good, because now I'm looking at killing. Okay, I've done the things I've always done, and it's not working. What's going wrong? Okay, let's let's analyze it a little deeper. Okay, so I made three of these. So and they have an approximate, especially when the wind's running, of 7 megawatts. So this, this can output 40. Three of these output 7, that's 21 megawatts. Basic math, I know, but it's going to be important because now I know I'm like I spent just as much money for those three as I would have on one of those. So I've I've, I've instantly made the game harder by by building wind turbines. Um, again, we're going to put this a little bit closer, so that's nice. I'm going to make sure I have the sewage outlet because obviously they were very very upset about that. The nice thing too is I guess I have the eco water outlet. I don't really want this because this is something you'd want for later. Um, well, the drain capacity is less, and it requires more electricity. But this map might be one where they probably want it, just because you have so little water. That's okay. Okay, we're going to connect the pipes. So, that instantly told us we had a good sound. Okay, now notice again, I have to run this so far. So I'm going to try and be as direct as I can. I want to make sure I encompass as much of the zoning as I possibly can. Because that's something I didn't really do before. Let's leave that there. That one's right. Another line there. Okay, so now my zoning's good. 30,000. I'm in a much better spot. Much better spot now. So, now I can connect these up. And if you're wondering why I'm not going right to the power plant, these blue, this blue area is all I need to run to. So this tells me that it's hooked up to the grid. So, it's a nice high level thing. Okay. Let's run over to here. Okay, let's go a little deeper. That should be adjacent, so that should be good. Zoom in a little bit. Let's do this. And you'll see why I do this in a bit because I can zone here and that's going to be beneficial. Alright. 30. We're way ahead of the game now. I think this is going to be. This, this is a much better start. It's not a start that I would have liked. So, in terms of the zoning, notice I can put huge blocks in, which is fine. Um, but in terms of the zoning, I have to try and remember how to do this. There's a paintbrush. Ah, oh, it's hiding. It's hiding. It's right here. That's fill. So marquee is what I want. And the reason I want that is because I'm going to do this. So now, this will populate. Bring power to this side. Not just a bearded face over here. Okay. Now, a uh, nice little block of commercial. That'll be nice. And we can go back to Phil. I think we're in a good spot. So, my wonderful couple of viewers that are there, I think this is a much better place. Uh, we have a astronomically more fun, so that's the nice thing, is that once we get this really rocking and rolling, we've got a little bit more to play with. We've got water, right? And we've got other things, so you know, the economy panel is unlocked, kinda. I don't know why they unlock it now. I can't get these things. Those things are important. Those things are very important. All right. So let's see, let's see. So now the waiting game happens again. There you go. So we've got some residential coming in. We're not losing as much. This is good. This is good that this happened because now this will provide power to that. They won't whine, and this is probably set. All right, we're we're in, we're in good shape. As long as these people actually show up, we've got a little bit more of a bank balance to lose, 
Um, this is mainly for because of the maintenance, and this is probably why they unlock it, is I can adjust how much money we put into power and water. Um, I, I don't like reducing this. We could probably drop the water a little bit. I don't think we could drop the power. So the water, we could actually reduce how much service we provide to save some money. Because we could actually, we probably can run at about 50% capacity. Still be fine in terms of output. So we can take, so right now it's about 30,000. 30, and I don't think we need many more than that. Same thing there. So water availability. So again, information galore, using data. Could, could you not see anything better in terms of in, in, in teaching in this scenario? This is math, right? This is social studies. These are things of where you can clearly see uh, what occurs based on information and processing data. So crucial and super, super crucial skill going into our modern workforce. So uh, notice that the budget is better. So that's a nice place. So I'm glad I did that. We've got people. Our demand is actually stabilizing, which is nice. Um, I'm going to populate this piece. Uh, commercials. Usually there isn't a lot of commercial that's required. So we're, we're doing pretty good in terms of industrial now. Okay, so industrial, what I'd like to do is this. Marquee that. This is something I might save because what we get later on is office zones. And so office zones also provide workplaces. You need schools and stuff, but this is a good spot to kind of gap between our industry and our residential. So yeah, we're losing less. We've got a, still a decent amount of residential, which is nice. We're at a point where um, because of the money I have, I think I'm going to stretch this out. No, not yet. I'm going to actually put residential there first. Because if I take out that power line, I need to make sure that there's enough other things that are powered that put things through. There we go. We're starting to move towards that positive. Getting people much better. Now, now we'll be able to cruise into this. This is... Once we, the start is the hardest part of a simulation game. I, I don't know, anyone play The Sims, you, you know this too, is that if you build too big of a house or too small of a house, um, issues happen very quickly, right? We can apparently make a historical building. I'm not interested. Um, the dark part of this game is actually very challenging to work with. So let's extend this out instead. I would like to do this, but we've got some zoning there, so we can kind of build behind it. I think that'll be the key. So let's extend this out. We can replace that power line. So let's go only go this far, because we want to make sure we've got a nice established city block. I am going to take out a little bit of housing there, but that's OK. We'll reestablish all of this stuff that will build up very quickly. They can complain about it, but it's for the betterment of the community. So I'm going to keep this up. I'm not happy with this. This is this is going to cause me headaches later. I, I will worry about that at that point. But okay, let's extend this up. OK, I'll see if that works. I'm not sure if it will. Populate that up. What we'll do is maybe a little commercial spot here. We'll see if it grows. I don't know if it will. But okay, we're okay. Got lots of demand for residential, which is really nice to see. I'm gonna build this out. So I think I think we're gonna need it. We're definitely going positive. There we go. All right. Depends if the power will trigger, yeah. That's what I was worried about. Okay, okay. That's good, that's good. So I could establish that. So now that the power is in the zone, this zone powers all the other zones. 
That's something that's a little different from City Skylines and SimCity, and those that have played like SimCity 2000 in the past. Cruise control now, folks. Cruise control. So, Sim Games. What do you guys think? From an educational perspective, what do you think? Put your answer in chat right now or in the comments. It would be great to hear from people that are educators. I'm hoping to bring in more people that are educators. Uh, I put this out on my Twitter, so there are lots more people in education looking at these types of things. So that's pretty wonderful. But in terms of creating a simulation game, how do sim games work? Let's start looking at the first question while my city is starting to establish itself. There's a lot of data. And I think that's what we've really touched on is there's a lot of data. The next component is artificial intelligence. And this is an area I'm starting to learn a lot in. So, it tells us that we need some water. Okay, so our water has been established, so we're good there. So this is, again, artificial intelligence is an area I'm looking at developing in because I want to know more for my students. I'd like to teach some advanced courses, um, getting my students ready for that next level of computer science in university because I think there's going to be a large transition in what's going to be taught at the next level because um, technology keeps changing. So in that scenario, what is artificial intelligence? Well, as our game is simulating behind the scenes, I'm going to establish more industry before we move over. Round this off. Let's get another block established. Because we got a lot of demand for industry. You don't want to build too much. When the demand is this high though, I know I need this this amount. Actually I should push that down because look how look how quick it gets going. Mainly I'm accelerated. So let's slow down time a little bit. Man, I don't even think I've met the demand. That's been crazy. All right. The wonderful music in the background. I'm going to turn that off for you guys. I get to hear it. Artificial intelligence. Sometimes called machine intelligence. Intelligence demonstrated by machines. Generic, I know, but here's the thing. You Google AI, artificial intelligence, and look at all of the stuff that comes up. Accenture. Anyone know what Accenture is? If you don't, look it up. This is in terms of... Um, I'll click on it so that I can explain this a little bit better. So, global, in Canada... So what are they? That's great. We get to meet like everyone under the sun. They are now an incredibly diverse yeah, company, <laughs> as you can see, services, uh, consulting, applied intelligence, supply chain operations, so notice in technology. Um, so Accenture is, is a company that's grown ex exponentially since I was in technology. Um, they provide a lot of services around technology. Um, I believe they are a lot of SAP. So that's a big thing. If you're not using sim games, considering they have multiple uses, such as problem solving, critical thinking, planning, they are everything, my man. Good to see you, Mr. Stewart. Um, the hard thing is, is getting administrators, administrators to buy into this and, and allowing a computer lab to be set up with these types of games on them and letting kids having this game time, having a dedicated class period of like, hey, here's the scenario, here's the problems that you have to solve, right? Um, we can build out these scenarios and I'll showcase some of that stuff in Planet Zoo. Planet Zoo is wonderful because it's now taking cities as big scale, macro scale, and zoo is micro scale. So I'm excited to, to show you guys some Planet Zoo in a bit. I, I want to build the city out first. It's starting to look pretty good. Um, so there's Accenture in terms of it. Here's your, your two biggies, though. Uh, in terms of it, you've got IBM and SAS, so SAS and IBM. IBM has been doing artificial intelligence works forever. 
literally, I think, forever. Um, so they are someone, because I don't know if you've heard of Watson. So IBM Watson is a piece of this puzzle. Um, notice how much they've grown. IBM is a leader with quantum computing. So some company that started out with international business machines around uh, basic work computers and typewriters is one of the leaders in providing some of this. Huge, huge company. Like there's so many pieces to that puzzle. I, just, I don't even know where to start. Uh, SAS is another one. Very large company that is analytics. Ooh, I love they start with Hawking. Hawking is amazing. Um, so they def definitely are big times in business analytics, SAS. But this should prove that there's, those are ads, right? That's just the top. That's the people who've paid for their stuff. Now we can go into deeper things like Google huge in terms of future of life, benefits and risks. Like as we go deeper, basically everyone wants to have a touch on AI. AI is going to drive a lot of things going forward. So why aren't we exposing our students to something like this? Why don't we talk about artificial intelligence or use artificial intelligence or programming within our science, math, English, social classes to allow students to see the power behind this? How can we make decisions faster and more effectively by using something like artificial intelligence? And if you don't understand it, I can guarantee you, you understand this. A simple game, and, and the games, you, Cities is one example. There's a lot of different games. Um, I know a lot of people like The Sims. The Sims is a perfect thing. So many people understand The Sims. But then just ask the questions to someone who, who's a little deeper in the knowledge of like, OK, how does this work? How can I explain this to my students? What's wrong with that? Should be nothing wrong with that. Right? I had to start the city three times. Nothing wrong with that. All right, we're going to need some more industry here. I'm going to wait and see if this, what the demand shift is. I do like we've got a little commercial need. See if that changes. We need to expand our water. I'm gonna build that out and build that down. Now they're making money. We're not making a lot, but we're gonna hit that cap, and then I'll have loans. I'll have things to to go a little bit deeper. Um, I want to extend this because that's gonna be where I build up my rest of my industry. So what what is artificial intelligence? What is it to you guys? And to me, it's the ability to solve problems utilizing technology as a resource. It's not the replacement of human beings in order to solve problems. It is utilizing technology to enable humans to program and solve problems. I heard this one time that someone was like, well, what's the purpose of teaching programming in schools? Because people are just going to, or AI is just going to write the code for you. Um, someone has to write the AI to write the code. That's a problem, isn't it? And this is why we, we need to have this understanding of these higher level things. And, and don't be like, oh, my kids don't understand. I don't understand this. How am I ever going to talk about this with students? Well, A, ask questions, guys, because that's what we ask our students to do. B, the other thing is, is you don't have to teach it at the highest level. You don't have to go and be an IBM salesperson to talk about artificial intelligence to some pharmaceutical company that's doing massive data modeling in terms of what kind of drugs will come out in the year 2050. Right? That's not what we need to do. We need to shrink it. We need to encapsulate it in something. Okay, how can we deliver this? Call of Duty is a sim. It's simulating something. How can we talk about artificial intelligence in terms of interactions within something like Call of Duty? Um, I'm not a huge COD fan myself. I'm just not very good at first-person shooters. I don't care about the violence. Um, but in this reality, it's, it's how do we engage our students with concepts that they truly understand? Like It just floors me that people are so scared to talk about complex things because I don't get it. No, that's garbage. You, you completely get it. Um, you have Netflix. You know AI because... They're previously watched. Their ability to put forth uh, something new, it's like this banner that comes up. That's all AI-driven. You, you live it every day. So you can't tell me you don't know it because you live it every single day. All right, hopefully we've rectified our water problem. Looks like we have. Okay, we've got production. We're, we're doing good. I'm happy with that. 
So these are the big things. This is why I, I, I love that there's a few people out there. I wish more people would watch this. I don't know. Uh, it's opinions. I guess I should go and do research on it and publish papers, but I don't think we should. I, th I don't think that's necessary anymore. I think we just need to share knowledge and we need to have discussions about knowledge and then make decisions on knowledge. I don't think we need all of the people to be all-knowing all, all the time. So we're still starting to see our adjustments occurring. We need a little more commercial. I think this is a good strip. That's a nice big strip. So I'm going to do a lot of commercial out here. That probably won't fill up all that way, but that's okay. Our growth rate's a little low, so that's something that hopefully we can rectify soon. So here's another thing, too, in terms of planning. And you'll notice I just went ahead and built that. I didn't explain why, but part of it is is that I know where my city is going to go now. I have a pretty good idea of what's going to be happening, right? I understand that I'm kind of building my residential out this way, and I'm building my industry down here. And if you, a lot of people that are longtime sim sim players will know that this is probably not big enough. It is in cities. Cities, you don't need a very large industry section because I can add offices later. Because I'm gonna, I, I would. I usually build, personally, a more educated city. Um, so that's going to be a thing. We do have a lot of area for agriculture, too. So agriculture, as these wind turbines are going to take up this area, this can be industry here. This can all be ag. And we can use agriculture as an industry, because that's a unique thing with cities, is they've got, instead of just generic yellow blocks for industry, we can actually zone out and build out specialized industries, which is more realistic. It's pouring rain. It isn't here anymore. That's nice. I have to look out the window. I haven't seen the light of day for a while. So hopefully some of these messages resonate with you folks. I think it's important. We'll build out a little bit more, and then we'll talk about machine learning, because this is a big thing, and this is something where sim games, I think this will be the next level, is where the machine starts to learn and make decisions and help make decisions with us. And it's, it's happening um, in our games. It's just not as prevalent yet. So that'll be interesting going forward. So hopefully you can see why people play a game like Cities and, and such. It's very relaxing. It's very uh, medium pace. It's nice. Let things happen. All right. Demand is down. That's okay. See, we're we're in a position where there's not much more we can do other than just s slowly keep our our eye on our demand meter and see where we need to go. But we are we are looking pretty good. We're looking like we can get there. I might not need that loan right away, so that's that's kind of nice. Which is why I think it's a little silly now. I, and again, I say now because I don't know. I can't remember that we can access it earlier because I might not need it. Because look, I I'm pulling in pretty good money, and I'll be able to adjust tax rates and bring in even more money. Because usually this is what you have to manage. This is the the management early on is you have to really manage your budget. And that's why taking the loan out is important because, yes, you put yourself backwards, but we can move it forwards. But I don't think I'll have that much of an issue. I might need it to get bigger services as I tip over that 480 mark. Yeah, we're looking pretty good in terms of how much zoning is there. I'm going to extend this pipe out, make sure that that has water. Yay! Don't have to restart the city for the fourth time. Um, so th this is this is interesting because this is where the game takes a huge turn, and because you now have access to a lot more different things, and your citizens want them. And so this is where the simulation becomes more complex. So now that I've gotten things off the ground, this is again where things are going to be a little more interesting because now they're going to want schools. I'm going to have to buy fire departments and healthcare. Um, notice pollution here. 
So I need to make sure that this is f far enough away from that. I think we're good. I think we're really good there. Yeah, we're building in a nice direction. Might build this further north instead of going this way to start. There's probably some resources here I might want to keep in check. Um, I think personally if I'm doing a kind of a green city and focusing on the flatland agriculture here, this is probably I'm not going to tie into the ore or oil or whatever is in here. I'm likely going to use that for uh, wind power because it's a height. Another scientific concept. Why does the wind power work better up top of a mountain than it does down in the valley? These are th conversations you can have, right? Okay, so we definitely need some health care. I usually start with health care. Um, garbage is also important. Actually, landfill is kind of nice. Landfills are things that uh, usually run into problems with, so let's build that out first, maybe. Okay, this is one thing with city skylines is the angles are sometimes a little strange. Actually, let's do this. Let's build that out. For like build a recycling center no not yet this is nice because actually i can build multiple garbage centers on this one stretch that's going to be a big deal that's going to really help us out can i stretch this oh and i can stretch this behind to build industry behind it oh it's like i planned it i didn't that worked out notice too i'm losing space here i'm not happy about that but Poor planning in my, my aspect there. What are you going to do? And the nice thing, too, is like when when I am able to move this out, I'll be able to connect that. I'll be able to connect these roads when I can buy this square. So why I'm saying that is because in the big map, I can now, in a bit, buy more land in order to move my city or make it bigger. And then I encompass this piece. So annexing is a thing. So interesting there. Again, I don't want to build this down, I don't think, because I want to make sure I can do those uh, multiple landfills, because landfills are very important. Okay, we need a medical clinic. Um, this is nice. The way I have it set up here, this is good. Uh, I might want to extend this out and leave it on a main drag. Actually, this is, again, this is where I think we're running into an issue where I'd like a bigger road here, because I would like to put this on a main drag that is easy to get to. But I think what I'm going to end up doing is just placing it in the center. I'm going to put it that way. Yeah, it'll be good because this is off the main road a little bit. So, yeah, not super happy about that, but that'll work. Okay, so we've we've got it. The nice thing too is I can go back and see what services I've gotten and what I should do. So a school is definitely because of the way I build my cities. I would like a school in early. So we want to make sure we get a school. So elementary school, um, I'm going to put it right here. So the nice thing is now this is established as kind of a services block. Is that what happens in real cities? Hmm. Actually, yeah, some of them. Not all of them, but... And that's also the thing. As, as sims go forward, they are bringing in ideas from traditional city building. And so that makes it very interesting. I was very surprised that the commercial is up. So this will be nice. I can put some commercial right beside my services. And then if I have to take it out later, I have to take it out later. Is what it is. Okay, I'm going to build out another block. So this will be in Epic 2 blocks, which is nice. And people will complain, and they... Of course they will, because I just destroyed their houses. Mm, I'm going to zone that out. I'm not, I'm not sure I need that, but I'm going to zone it out. No, well, let's bring the music back. Nice quiet music. Nice thing about City Skylines too is that you can uh, change your radio station. So like, I can play different music. It's kind of nice. So, a unique, a unique feature in a game. I'm going to turn down the music a little bit just because I feel like I'm blasting you guys. Okay, I'm 
Let's turn that down a little bit too. That should be good. That's better. That's better. Okay, so this is in a good spot. The demand is a little bit low. Um, I'm going to let this run slow, slow mode in the background a little bit. Now let's flip. So uh, artificial intelligence we've gone over. Then the last component of my technology piece for the stream today is um, machine learning. And how do we actually program machine learning? Um, one of the things that I've been very interested in is PyTorch and using Python as machine learning. Um, also notice that in terms of machine learning, you can do it on Amazon Web Services, so you can get in more power in order to do your machine learning. Um, there is so much behind this that I I just, I need to learn this so bad. And, I, and I'd like to take a Coursera course. Well, shout out to Coursera there. Um, but PyTorch is probably one of the things that I've, I've seen the most about and understanding that it's a library of code, so some stuff that you can use behind the scenes in order to begin your machine learning projects. And so it's kind of a neat thing. Um, again, I don't, I really, again, don't know enough about it to make things work. But like, it's really, again, really cool. Like you can see who's using it is very large industries. Um, and the reason is, is because they've got people who can get that stuff running. But I think machine learning, wouldn't you see, so let's put this in the context of a school. Administrators have a tough time running reports for say, I don't know, attendance. Wouldn't it be interesting if machine learning was analyzing every night the attendance of the school, found out trends in terms of student learning, and automated a report to the principal and an email home to a parent, which is very generic, which isn't, I know it's not the personal touch. Whoa, 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 don't, 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 don't freak out yet for those watching and those going to watch it later. But that impersonal piece can provide a spark. And I, I like that's where the PyTorch uh, spark comes in is the fact that now we can use data. The machine can do its role and now it's identified the problem we can use it to solve it if we understand how to use machine learning itself wouldn't that be awesome wouldn't that be interesting looking at any in a class if you're watching the trending of a certain grade um, in alberta one of the big things is diplomas um, this is something i do appreciate from saskatchewan i originally from saskatchewan so we, we don't have diploma exams in grade 12 where students have to write a standardized test depending on teacher um, experience etc but here everyone does so all grade 12 students write them wouldn't it be nice to use machine learning to track some of this stuff locally regionally provincially um, the the hard thing is is a lot of this stuff is set up for so much data we need to find a way to bring some of this this technology and shrink it down. And it can be done, it just, not a lot of people want to do it for such a small data set. Part of it is there's the little statistics element in there is with the smaller data set, the more, more unreliable results are, etc. cetera. But I, I'm, again, I'm learning a lot of stuff behind machine learning. Uh, one of the key things in terms of machine learning is in terms of neural networks. Thanks for listening to the class. Oh man, neural networks. Your like this is something I think is absolutely fascinating. Master. And um, I would love as the technology teacher to sit down with our biology teachers and discuss neural networks and how understanding the brain and how humans make decisions is the way that we have to create programs in order to actually make machine learning something that's going to be incredibly viable for large scale and small scale. That's going to be a massive thing. Neural networks is something that I'm learning a little bit about is, and if you don't know anything about neural networks, think of the word neural. Let's do some root words. Neural is brain or neurons, right? So it's in terms of understanding decision-making and networks is connections, right? Networking is connections. And so that's going to be the most important thing is how do we take right now those big scale ideas where they understanding neural networks and the larger neural networks and transitioning to much smaller things where we can utilize them to make uh, certain decisions a lot easier for everybody 
I think that's going to be super important going forward is learning machine learning and understanding. This is something I'd like to bring into my computer science class. Um, we're focused mainly on the game development side as, as something that's more interesting. But I think uh, as my students get more advanced, I'd like to pull some of this into their games so that they understand this complex element. Because I believe in terms of computing, this is going to be very important because this will be a natural transition to quantum computing, which I think is going to be astronomically important. So there's my three technology tidbits there. All right, let's see how we're doing behind the scenes. Well, I'm not broke. I got more people and my demand meter is up. So the nice thing is, is I can now just build more stuff. Um, this is where the game slows down a little bit. And for those that are falling asleep on the other side, I am doing the same because this is this is very much and truly where the game slows down. You have to be patient. You have to watch demand meter. Um, it's a lot about organizing and making sure you're following your plan, making sure you understand the plan. Oop. That's been sitting without power for a while. I wonder why it built down there, not up here. That's very strange. Well, I can use this weird space fine to provide them with some power. Okay, so now, oh, and I was just going to say, like, this is something where you got to monitor our water, because remember we turned it down before. So that we weren't losing as much. So I'm going to turn this up a little bit. Uh, let's go to about 70% production. I never change garbage because garbage gets up. That's probably, I would suggest, that's some data that needs to change in City Skylines is understanding garbage production. Um, I think citizens make way too much garbage way too quickly. And so the problem is, is your garbage people get very, very um, overwhelmed very quickly. And that's a problem. Man, this looks like sewage for most places in Saskatchewan where it's just all willy-nilly. Mainly just because you have to find the soft spot to dig up. So our students are getting educated. Our students, our citizens of Los Rico are getting educated. They've got health care. They have garbage. Um, we'll slowly make back our money. I think we're in a good spot here, folks. So again, like now, this would be a nice time that I can start maybe expanding this out and start building that downtown area that I talked about. So I'll probably build this out a bit. And the nice thing is that you want these connections. This one, I'm actually, I am going to take that one out. So I'm going to take that one out, mainly just because I don't want too many intersections here, because I want this to be a fairly continuous loop. This street actually is something that's going to be a pain. I don't want that one there either, but yay! All right, now notice huge changes. Now this is where we've got fire and police. So, and again, scaffolding difficulty. It's like what we do in school. Game designers are so good at this, by the way, so good. All right, so now we've got different policies, specializations, more money if we want it. Um, Self-sufficient buildings, which is kind of neat. Uh, organic and local produce, that's kind of cool, actually. I don't think I've done that one. Um, and police and fire. So now this is just ne next layer, right? So now that we've got the next layer, we've got to build out our police and fire. Uh, do I want all the commercial? No. I do want a pretty big block of it, though. That's residential. So this is somewhere where I might plow through. Actually, no, I'm going to do it. Not a mite. Let's just do it. Yeah, they're not going to like me very much. But this rounds out things very well. Uh, I am going to take this photo. And let's see the Let's do all the And if you're going, hey, your demand is commercial. Ah, again. I know I, I have an idea of where this is going. Ain't my first city skylines rodeo. So 
So what you'll notice is the big thing too, you know, in like this game you can zoom the camera out so much, and the camera is something I want to talk about at a different point in time. But oh, there's an airplane that flew by. That was cool. I need water. So the camera goes out really far, which is nice. So it's like, we can't see the models, but let's get in close. So now, all of these things would have had to have been modeled and constructed and put together, such as every car is an object. And you're going to see some of the same car, oh, literally right there. Um, same, Some of the same houses. But it's random, right? That's the most interesting thing is like, this house might exist five other places in the city, but they're clearly not side by side, which that happens sometimes. But like, it's so interesting how from in terms of objects that they have such a good way of randomizing what objects show up. It's incredible. Like these houses are the same design, but they're different paints. Like that's, that's pretty cool. And that's something that would be very difficult to do behind the scenes in, in the sim game. Like that's again, that's assets, right? Like, like that's where, they have specific amounts of houses and schools and commercial buildings, etc. But these are all modeled behind the scenes. And as they're built, that's also really cool. So if we can find a... We won't have a fresh building because we're low on demand. My system. Power there. Ooh, power. So now we're in a power issue. Which is an easy power issue for us to solve right now. Plunk. Coal power plants, see, that's the thing. Wind is easy to expand. Starting with coal is easy to easier to start, harder to expand. So wind is very easy for me to expand. Actually, I'm gonna put a couple of those down. That builds up some capacity for me. Not a lot, but enough. And districts, again, new. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to districts on stream today, so I don't know how much longer I'm gonna stay just with city skylines right now. Okay, now again, this is my downtown. Area, so I want to actually build this all out commercial. Yeah, I got lots of good new good buildings. All right, let's wait and see. Okay, this is cool. Let's get off of this so we can watch it build. So all of this is the construction component. So this particular object is a fixed piece. It knows what it wants to be. It has an idea of where it wants to go. So it has a set construction animation for that particular size of building and building itself. Okay, so it's a drugstore apparently. So let's watch it get constructed. So notice that everything is built very similarly. That's a construction animation for that size of building. And it didn't have to go all the way to the top. And they built it down and boom. We get that construction store. Or sorry, construction store. Drugstore. So that's kind of a neat thing is it's based on the size that it's selected that's going in this spot on the algorithms behind the scenes. It knows that this is going to be a drugstore, it's this size, it builds out the animation, builds it back down, and then boom, turns into what it's supposed to turn into. And this one already built, so let's see if we can catch another one. Okay, we'll watch this one, same thing, same size, neighborhood shop. So it builds it out. Oh, hey, does that not look a lot like what the drugstore is? You bet. Same type of thing, but now, as it deconstructs the construction stuff, on the inside of that, it's replaced by the model of the neighborhood shop. Also notice, not much difference, is there? Between the objects. Again, it's really smart modeling. Really smart decisions. And as for games, I'm just, I get floored every time, because it's just, man, real smart people doing real smart things there. So this is a, anyway, uh, this city was actually, will be in really good shape. This city can be built up for quite a ways. Only 4% full. So maybe they have changed the garbage, because usually like all 15 of them are traveling nearly non-stop. Drives me nuts. Alright, now this is perfect. Actually, this is, oh, the lone water patrol. Now this is one building. That happens to me probably more than it should. That's okay. Um, notice crime is now an issue. Crime was never an issue before, and then we got the city swift over because we now have access to police. So they're saying, hey, like, dude, build your police. Um, I think that'll be pretty simple. Um, I think 
think this is actually a really good spot right here. Actually, I'm gonna go here. Yep, I like that. And let's do fire. Uh, I typically don't put police and fire side by side, but I don't know. I don't even know if I'm gonna boot this city up after the stream is over. Right. So we're still making great income. Don't worry about that. Little fun features to build happiness. My, pe my peeps are happy. All right, so notice, solve the crime problem. So just like you would see in a classroom, problem solved, you get a, a, something that happens, or right? like cause and effect, right? So problem solved, this person, I guess, is still complaining, but sucking up buttercup. But notice the demand was low, and now the demand is high, now that I've added those services in. So uh, because the demand is so high, I think what I'm gonna do is build out three blocks. We're moving right along. It's good. It's absolutely good. Sim games are great. There's a lot of great sim games. One of the games I was really interested in using for is uh, a game called Capitalism. It's an older game, but absolutely fantastic. So now you can see our city is growing very rapidly, so we have to keep up with energy demand. So, okay. We are in, in that mode. We have enough, but we're going to run out of it quick. And I don't have enough money, so what should we do? If this were... Well, now I just got a huge influx of cash because of hitting an achievement. But what that would have been is like, okay, I need to start balancing those loans. I don't have to anymore because I got a whole bunch. Lots of new policies, new features. So this one is just uh, kind of a canals. That's kind of cool. I haven't built canals. Fences. This is cool stuff. Zoo, farm. Like this is where you start to get into zoning out your districts. We now have a lot more stuff. Again, scaffolding. Um, I would suggest maybe from my perspective, if I were someone new to this game, this this would be overwhelming. This many things happening at once. So um, maybe adding to the education piece would be nice. A few of the, the park stuff, I think that'd be neat because that's the next piece, right? Is now beautifying and creating spaces. Um, sports hall and gymnasium, I think that'd be a nice health addition, right? Warehouse yard, again, industry, that's another little addition. So those would be one more tier, but that's fine. I'm not too worried. The game is gently reminding me that I forgot to build water pipes. But that also solved my problem because now I can go and throw up a couple more wind turbines to build that capacity. So I want to be careful with commercial demand because my commercial demand can be interesting. Once we build a public library, I think that's fair. I think if we have the funds, that's something we should consider. I was going to say, I don't think we have the funds for 22000 That's not bad. Again, we could take out a loan. We could do all those things. And then it becomes money management, right? Now, financial management teachers, you can have a different conversation through a game. All right? This macro scale game in the span of an hour, I've had to make countless decisions. I've had to continually um, look at data, analyze data, and make decisions. And here's the thing, and I, and I read a little bit about it, or actually didn't read a little bit about it. I was at a, a PD. Um, thank you to the University of Calgary. It was uh, managing ADHD in isolation. So that was really good. Um, and they talked about, well, novelty, and that just popped in my head because the song changed, and I was like, oh, hey, squirrel. So in that scenario, train of thought gone. Oh my goodness. All right, pause music. Pause music. You're too good. Music's too good. All right. Let's, let's, let's do this, team. We can do this. Making a lot of decisions. Managing information. 
right? Putting students in the scenarios where they have to understand all these things is going to be super important. Um, understanding, you can tie this into, okay, how does machine learning work? How does artificial intelligence work? You can have those conversations. Social studies, supply and demand, you can bring in economics. Uh, in terms of other social studies, you could create scenarios based on the citizens of the city, right? Games are so powerful. Have that conversation. Ah, there it is. That's the one. That's where the train of thought fell off the rails there was in the fact of, and this is what happened in seminars, they said, well, with games and, and electronic devices and shows, for students with ADHD, you just need to sit down with them and explain to them some of the ins and outs, some of the reality versus fantasy, um, because impulse is, and impulse control is so weak, they don't understand some of those things. And I was like, isn't that just everybody? Why doesn't everyone sit down with their kids and explain to them what's going on in their shows, their games, any videos they're watching, their social media, have that conversation? Why not? My daughter, and my and I know my wife is, is not in a huge approval of this, but she's, she's getting better, um, and mainly because of the stigma behind games. Um, she likes to sit down with me and play Planet Zoo. And this is a great segue, because I'm going to change over to Planet Zoo for the next 40 minutes while the stream is running. And uh, we'll talk about micro, because this is macro sim, and it's going to go to micro sim. And, um, and she likes to say, oh, we talk, we discuss what's happening. How, how did this happen? Why did this happen? And have that problem-solving discussion. What's wrong with that? Why not sit down and play a game of Call of Duty with a teenager and say, what's going on here? Have them explain something to you. Make them know that, A, it's a game. So the violence is not real violence. It's something that is built into uh, entertain your brain, which that's kind of sad that human brain appreciates some of that stuff. But, well, we know it does, sadly, through history. You have the history content. But then instead of focusing on the violence, bring them away from the violence. Don't let their brain be stimulated by that violent content. Let their brain be stimulated by, hey, um, did you know in World War II this, this, and this? Oh, did you know Call of Duty, this particular Call of Duty is based on World War One, and this is some of the things that I, I understand from World War One. What do you understand? Talk to me about it. Um, one of our teachers was saying they had a wonderful conversation with uh, parents about certain things, and their student was bringing up some of the content that they had learned in class, and they were very proud of them. I was like, that's perfect. But why aren't we having those discussions more often? let's use traditional media sources we can talk about it through the news no one really watches the news every day but bring in social media talk about social media talk to parents and educate them and like you just need to talk to your kids about these things so that when we are educating our senior administration when we're talking to people to allow us to bring these things in they can make decisions a little easier saying okay i understand because i know my parents understand i know the people who i'm serving understand why you want to do this why league of legends being fake violence is okay is because we always have that constant discussion about the strategy component it's not the violent component right we take the violence out of the game the game still has it but they don't notice it because they're focusing on other things they're focusing on strategy teamwork communication they're focusing on the things and the skills we want kids to have those are all built into games they will never notice the violence if we continue to have conversations with them. So I know basically no one's watching, but if you're watching, huge heart to heart message. Maybe I'll pull that section out and make a video of it on its own um, because I'm so passionate about that. I believe it so strongly is the fact that games have so much stigma behind it. And I just hate the fact that it takes someone with a PhD to say, oh no, there's violence in video games is okay. Uh, I don't have a PhD, but I can guarantee you by having conversations, and this is why I understand the violent difference, because my dad sat down with me and he played Street Fighter 2 with me. He played Mortal Kombat with me and we didn't talk about the violence. We talked about the strategy, the buttons to press, the combinations, the nimble fingers. We talked about the, the story, the lore behind it. We didn't talk about the fact that I just cut someone's head off. We didn't. We had fun together as a family. And that's the important piece. That's what we need to relay to those people that are naysayers to games because they don't understand that component. They think it's all about the violence. Human brain won't register violence if there's another social interaction. Highly likely, I guess I don't have a PhD, so what do I know? All right, I just try to be smart sometimes. 
Okay, this is a good transition period after that little rant, but this city is looking good. Uh, problem incoming, and I can tell you right now, and this is where uh, you'll notice I change game speed modes for those that are like, oh, hey, I kind of want City Skylines now. Uh, the DLC is great, by the way. Uh, you might have to find a package with some of the DLC because the DLC is great. But I can tell you right now, and the reason the pause is nice is because I'm going to have traffic issues, and I know I am because of right here. Right? There's going to be traffic issues, and it's going to happen right here, and this is why I wanted a bigger street here because i got lots of people turning in. And you'll notice that with the smaller streets, do you see any traffic lights here? No. It's going to cause problems. I know it was. Oh, well, don't have to worry about it now. Okay, City Skylines. I am going to save this because maybe I'll, I'll pop it up at some point in time. All right? Let's just save that there. All right. Games unloading things from RAM. Smart. So in terms of exiting, so it's unloading everything. I... I always find it interesting that they lots of people always have like flywheels and stuff when a game's closing, but those are so hard to run while things are all the other things are running. Okay. So in this scenario Let's open up some Planet Zoo. For those watching now and those watching later, hopefully you're enjoying everything. Hope you're enjoying the rants. I appreciate people that are watching, that's wonderful. So, please make sure that you continue on. A terrifying ostrich just ran past. Those that are terrified of birds, I'm sorry. Again, another another game with really good music. Okay. All right. We're gonna do a new sandbox. Uh, we're gonna build a tiger this time, North America. We're gonna do easy because. Uh, I don't want to have to restart the zoo 50 times. I've been learning. As I'm playing with my daughter, I have to continue to learn a whole bunch of stuff. So that's a big thing. All right, let's do some fixing here. Well, that's loading up in the background. Boom. All right. Welcome to Planet Zoo. Love Planet Zoo. Um, it's a game that I, I hadn't played that much until my daughter was interested in playing some games with me. So that's pretty cool. So in this scenario, we own a zoo. And for those that are not into zoos, um, I, I appreciate the science behind a zoo. I appreciate the conservation effort behind a zoo. So it's not in captivity of animals. It's in terms of providing opportunity and allowing um, certain species to flourish when they couldn't otherwise. I know human intervention maybe isn't the best thing sometimes, but animals are cool, what can I say? All right. So Planet Zoo is interesting because you kind of start with this bare land. So we're in a taiga location, so that's going to be a little bit of a challenge. It sets out what our grass looks like and our trees and stuff. But the problem is, is that as we bring in animals, so say if we wanted a giraffe, do you think a giraffe really likes North American taiga? Probably not. And again, simulation. Simulation, huge. So in this scenario, we have to understand those things. Oh man, just look at the biology class that you could teach through this. And actually, there's there's what I love about this game now too, is this reproduction and understanding gestation periods. Like you, an elephant goes through an actual elephant gestation period. So. In terms of simulation, you don't even have to talk to sim. You can talk about the subject content and allow the simulation to draw that out and have questions and allow students to engage in it. And it's just so crucial, so, so crucial in order to make sure that your students are understanding and playing. Um, the hard thing with games, and, I, and this is a catch-22, and I think this comes from teaching where I do in Brooks, where you have a very diverse uh, student population with a high, wide variety of income is in the circumstance where there's a lot of people that can't afford to play games. And this is where we really need to provide some of these opportunities at school, is handpicking some of the things and providing educational content around it and saying, okay, we're going to play this game, we're going to allow you to play this game in school, but these are the things that you need to do for me in order to 
be able to play that game. So Planet Zoo is on our computers. You can play Planet Zoo, that's fine, but I want you to hand this in, and or you know you need to be part of this class in order to access it, and those types of things. I know like I want every kid to play every game, but I think that's where you can really sell it to senior administrators and, and then people who make decisions of how do how can I get this game in my school? Well, let's do bio. Let's do an entire biology class. Let's do this as a piece of the puzzle where we're going to play Planet Zoo once a week. You're going to work on your zoo, and then we're going to talk about and debrief about it at some point in time. All right, how does Planet Zoo work? Well, first and foremost, we need to build barriers to then build habitats, which then are supplemented by nature, which then are supplemented by facilities, which include staff rooms, coffee shops, etc. Uh, the construction piece is, allows you to build um, certain little kind of fun things, ambiance, and Blueprints lets you build a whole bunch of stuff and then save that whole bunch of stuff and then so you can do it later. So there's a lot of different Blueprints. Um, so you can tell like the African Origins building, like this is a piece together piece uh, something. So that's going to be important. Uh, it's not important for me right now. I'm not as good at Planet Zoo as I have not played nearly enough as this as I have Skitty Skyline. So some of the things I talk about here is going to be more about um, the technology topics such as the modeling. Modeling, I, like I said, I would like to take a screenshot, but this game is, would be a lot better to take a screenshot of, and then maybe we can look at a little bit of Blender. Maybe I'll save that for another stream. I don't know. I'm having a lot of fun playing today. Okay. We're going to start out with something simple. Uh, first and foremost, we can't have an Animal Trade Center, so we need to start planning out our zoo. Same thing as we did with City Skyline. So where are we going to put things? So we instantly know that this is the entrance path for our people. So... How do I know? Well, it's the entrance. I'm going to build this out so that we have a nice start here. I think it's going to be a little too wide. Let's go. 8, 8, still too big. 6. 6 is too small. Apparently it's 7. Okay. There. Okay, so this is a nice start out. This gives us a little bit to work with. Um, maybe we're going to put exhibit somewhere. We need to have staff locations first, and so we need to build staff paths. And we don't need them as big. We can put them to the smallest amount. But like, this is now only staff can go on here. And we're going to build out. And it's because people don't want to see staff rooms and stuff, right? So we're in our taiga. I want to keep that keep that up. Filters, biome. This is what I love about Planet Zoo is that it's so robust, it's so big that realistically it'd be so hard to find things if it didn't have these filters. Like, so I filtered out Taiga. Right? Let's put some of these in here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just blocking off the staff stuff so that I'm going to build it further out but this now is something where it's honestly an aesthetic thing it makes it look nice uh, people like the trees coming in so it's on uh, happiness so it helps the overall happiness of people and now I'm going to build out my other thing again apparently I like weird angles today don't know what's up with that um, okay So we want staff facilities, so we can filter that out. Um, I just built the very basic stuff, so let's build a trade center first. We gotta rotate this around. This is actually really cool because this will be great lead into 3D graphics. So those that have done any work with 3D programs, you know what this means. So this means I can move it along the Y axis. This is along the X axis, and this is along the Z axis. Well, it depends. Red sometimes means X and blue sometimes means Z, so it depends where you are. Um, but I can make it go up and down. I can sink it into the ground. Uh, I'm going to cancel that now, so I have the basic one. So now I want to rotate it so that the door is facing the right way. I'm going to zoom in a bit, make sure I can see. We're going to do a move. And I want to rotate it a little bit more. So this is a nice thing I like. I really like about uh, Planet Zoo. So we could put a group, actually that probably would have been smart to build a group of buildings for that so that they're all taken care of in a group. Um, not a big deal right now. Is things are more natural. 
things aren't so gridded out and you're going to have weird curves and stuff and it's just okay it's very flow oriented and i i really appreciate that i do really like that so that's kind of nice okay so we have the classic we have the animal trade center um, we will need a keeper hut we'll just put it and build a small one we don't have to spin it again not as gridded kind of a little more natural i try i try my best to be organized that's that's kind of a key uh, we will want to quarantine animal quarantine is going to be very crucial i'll put that there um we don't need a research center to start uh, because it's sandbox this isn't a huge thing it's something we should have should consider we, we want a staff room because we like our staff I'll put it on the other side. Woo! There you go. That's a nice little staff area. Far enough from the people so that my people won't get upset that they're staring at staff instead of other things. Um, speaking of staff, that means we're going to have to hire some staff. So we definitely want a zookeeper. For those that have played other theme parky simmy games you'll notice that you just randomly drop people in the air we need a vet we will need a caretaker and i'm not going to do any vendor shops right now so that's not going to be a deal uh, mechanic isn't a big deal yet we will need one but not for now and security we won't need one yet either because we're not big enough all right our first exhibit now we need to pick what we're going to have so we're in a taiga location. So I think in this scenario, we should really find a taiga animal. And this is where you got to go, okay, notice the filters. I can do some of these things, but I, I have to have an idea of where these animals are from and what they do. So like an aardvark. Is an aardvark something that's going to be good? The nice thing with that is I can click on it and find out all about aardvark. I can click on the Zoopedia, and the Zoopedia is really cool. They've done a really good job there lots of things to talk about so you can have a, a, a conversation about um, a conservation in terms of endangerment right so there's endangerment so in terms of the african elephant you know talks about so these are things that i think are really cool talks about class order family genus oh man taxonomy right there folks there's a taxonomy lesson in itself you just literally tell them play planet zoo and open up the zoopedia so that's perfect. So in this one, though, but we can talk about natural habitat. Where are they? This is really cool um, because this is real, right? Now you're, you're feeling like you're in this sense of realism, and that's a beauty of a, a wonderful sim. It talks about regions, which is kind of neat. So you can go a little bit deeper into that. So that'll be nice. American bison is in grasslands, Canada, USA. So more of a grasslands animal, so not taiga. Bank of the tigers. Boa constrictors. No snakes, thank you. So the big thing with uh, these things, these are little small exhibits, like cheetahs, Africa, right? So this is nice. So I can go in and find what would work. So this is temperate tropical. Apparently they're from Taiwan. They're from Ozen Black Bear. Again, I'm learning things as I'm playing. I don't know anything about this, so that's kind of nice. Giant pandas, obviously. Cannot work. They're in central China. Grizzlies. Would probably work fairly well. Tundra taiga. Okay, so a grizzly bear might be a good exhibit. A Himalayan brown bear. The taiga tundra. So we could do Himalayan brown bear. Hippo will clearly not work. So that's going to be important. Pygmy hippo. Snow leopard. Snow leopard might work. Taiga. So, yeah, my, my pick was a timber wolf, and I knew the timber wolf was there. So let's build a wolf. I, I think wolves. Here's the big thing that we need to know is we need to know that they need a fairly large habitat. They do not need any climbing requirements, so they don't need anything to go up or down. Um, the fence that they need is a grade 2, 
So that tells me that I could, what type of fence I can use. That's important. It tells me what temperature they have and what they need for water. So this is the important piece, right? It gives you a little information on the species. How big did they get? Those types of things. That's kind of neat. Research is cool because research goes through, and this is why research is important because it unlocks everything on Sandbox. But like the fun facts, like this is so cool that you can go and learn about these things. Um, anything about interspecies enrichment. Um, apparently, you can talk about world records and sizing and other things. There's a cute wolf pup. All right, so we're gonna definitely let's let's do a timber wolf. I think that's gonna be fun. Okay, I like the wood fence, wood logs. Grade three, it is climbable, but that doesn't matter. And so this is nice, is that we can already start right here. I do kind of an octagonal approach. Little circular kind of weird shapes. I kind of wish it would give me how big this really is, but that's okay. But that's, that's a decent, like this, and to me, I just kind of visualize what you would see at a zoo and go from there so that looks pretty good i don't have to worry two meters should be fine um that might be something that will bite me later but it won't be me that's good bit uh what you need to do is make sure you have glass so glass is grade two so that will be fine but the glass allows your people to see it so that's important okay so now let's move this along so we had that at seven, I believe. Perfect. And so this now establishes kind of the setup to our zoo. And so like we can tree this off. So this space is good. Uh, we can provide more staff path if this needs to go out this way. So this is actually a good setup. I like this. Okay, we'll go to our animal trading center. We'll find out. And this is something I find really neat. So we had aardvark selected. Let's get that off. Let's scroll the bottom and find our timber wolves. Um, I'm a fan of putting male and female because I mean do breeding, which is neat. So anything adopted for cash cannot be breeded into the wild. So this is specifically purchased for a breeding program. So that's awesome because that's ethical, right? So that's turning talking about the ethics behind a zoo. Um, this is something a source is from private zoo. So someone had this and now they're having to release it. So we are able to pick that up. So we can we can do that. To make sure okay i got a mail first i was like ah that's another okay so releasing to the wild is interesting because when you do the conservation piece like this is an animal rescue so if we adopt him um he would be something we can utilize within the zoo but we can also release it back out to the wild so that would be fantastic okay so now we've got our animals in our animal center they're now being taken care of they're getting ready to go in terms of barrier, one thing I did forget was a habitat gate. And a habitat gate is important because if I'm a zookeeper, I need to get in to feed them, right? So you'll notice that the, pen, the habitat is very bland right now. And we'll, we'll make it better. Um, those that really know this game, I think, probably have an, an advantage because they know what wolves need and so they'll be able to build it out or they'll look at all that stuff in the zoopedia i i i tend to do this in a weird way where i'm gonna get them into their location and then go from there all right yeah they fell out of the sky okay so things are moving along now we've got animals coming in once the animals get there the big thing is they'll show data and the use of data again big in the use of data so that's a super important thing is is why simulation games are so crucial to education is because our students can have an opportunity to work with data and understand and manipulate data and understand the using data and analyzing data and data 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 all right so our wolves are arriving so i'm going to say i'm going to save my modeling for another day um mainly just because it's something that I would like to take a little more time on. I would like to spend more time modeling um, instead of just pulling something out and trying to work with it really fast. So just we'll do more of that maybe next week. So I'm going to work on the last piece, and that's video capture and brand. 
This is always, always end. I always end with a little snippet about business. Is how do we incorporate and think about this from a business perspective, right? Because gaming is a business industry. It's an entertainment industry. So we have to consider all those things. So how do we record your game footage? Well, the program I use is called OBS. So it's open broadcasting software. It's fantastic. It's what I use to stream. It's what you can use to record. And it does a very good job. Um, there's so many things you can tweak with it. There's so many things you can play with. Um, the output is very nice. So it's just wonderful software to utilize so that's what i would recommend is open broadcasting software instead of streaming you'll just do recording and you can set it up just like this you can have webcam you can have other things you can have overlays which makes it for a better experience from a podcast perspective because when you're talking um and i'm even finding this a lot as i'm teaching virtually now is having that conversation having the ability to um, be present is super crucial and so that's 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 the nice thing is making sure webcam. So even if you're just doing a podcast type thing, it's nice to see you. So that's how we can do it. So how can you promote your brand? And so therein lies the thing is you'll need to establish brand. One of my favorite things to look at on YouTube right now is Final Boss TV. Um, I'm just playing a lot of World of Warcraft these days. And that's oh, MMORPG is a whole different ball of wax. We can talk about that next week. Um, but the big thing in terms of brand and Final Boss TV is he's done a very good job in building his brand. Started very small, just doing simple things, um, but he's established the fact that his brand is not just a streamer and a streamer of Warcraft, he also is an artist and does other things, which has enabled him to get sponsors, which has enabled him to continue to grow. And so how do you establish that brand? Well, you need a brand you need something to call your own and that's where he got final boss tv he uses his in-game call sign which is bay not his real name so he's got all of these things that is his brand and how do you then build that out well using these videos right and that's why i stream is, is i'm establishing a brand i've got something going on here in terms of brand and that's really important right so in terms of building that out I have to get more people Well, I post it on Twitter, right? So that's where it's really important to understand that you need to make sure you're constantly trying to reach more and more people uh, and, and establishing and building yourself and building your confidence. What do you want to look like? How do you want to proceed? What types of messages do you want to talk about? Right, right now, this, this whole stream is about teaching with gaming. Right? I have a plan. I know what I'm going to talk about every time I get on. And that's important is when you're establishing your brand is what are you? Have that identity. I think that's important from, and I really wish more students would, would take marketing and stuff like that because that's important just in general. How do you establish yourself, your identity? Right? How do you build your presence within a space, whether it be workplace, school place, etc.? And I think that's important. Right? So how do we build the brand of the zoo? Aha, segue. Uh, we got to get our wolves going. People are not going to want to come to a zoo where things are unhappy. Um, so why I do this, why I did what I did, like I said, you can probably build up most of this just by the Zoopedia. But now I can figure it out because their habitat is weak. There's a lot of issues there. So I'm going to look at the terrain. Okay, So there is way too much long grass for these guys. They hate long grass. They can live in any kind of snow. Um, they like anything else but long grass. So we can add a little bit of short grass. So let's adjust some terrain. So apparently there's a lot of long grass here. We gotta mow the grass. But I can't put too much, so this is the thing. I have to be careful. Uh-oh. Oh, we're good. Are we good? Yep, we're good. That was weird. Apparently, apparently so much mowing of the grass it trips something out. Okay, so we got a lot of long grass here. I can add soil, so I got a lot of room for soil. Alright, so we're taking out some of that, that grass and we're adding in some soil. We can add any kind of snow. So this is where two right, we have to be careful. Cause this will be neat. This will be nice. Depends on the season, it looks like that that's kinda neat. Um, we can add a little bit of sand. I don't think sand is rock. I think was a nice thing that we can add here. So the front can be nice and rocky. So as you can see, we're slow leading away at this. This is nice. 
Um, we're not going above. We've got the correct amount of rock. Let's put some rock in the back. Beyond that snow, that'll be good. So we're eating away at that long grass. I think we need to finish the rest off with soil. Slowly getting rid of it. Let's put some rough rock in the back. Smooth rock in the front. A little bit of grass. I think this is, this is starting to definitely take shape. I like the, the rockiness in the back. This is kind of the nice thing too, is that if you've got someone who doesn't believe they're, they've got artistic skills, this is something that I've learned by playing simulation games is one piece is understanding shape and structure and sizing and stuff but the big thing is a game like this which is more fluid and you're not kind of stuck in squares is understanding that little bit of art side and understanding painting and all that stuff i think it's it's very interesting and unique in that aspect okay so that's good so this tells me our terrain is good we're gonna need shelter obviously we'll get there as you can see it takes a while to set up a pen uh, apparently plants they don't really like a lot of plants so that's kind of neat I think some rocks would be neat I think that would be that would be kind of a neat environment for them um, that would be would have been another way to take out some of the stuff but we'll get there some nature let's add some rock piece I think that'll be kind of neat so like tiger rock obviously so again this is the interesting thing about understanding art and 3d modeling because i i know what keys spread things around Did that work out that worked out that looks pretty good i really like that little rock formation in the back there um they don't really need climbing let's make sure i didn't wreck terrain yeah we're good there plants we're good there they don't care yeah there's just there's a lot of different things Okay, that's nice. Let's put something like that in. There we go. Well, a nice thing like too is what I would I would like is to build in in some decorative stuff. So, it's realistically a little bit of plant in there isn't going to hurt them. Like, they don't, they're pretty easy going around plants, which is kind of nice. So we're not wrecking any terrain, which is good. Like I said, you want some, some of this stuff, and this is more for me. Man, if we had money, if we didn't have the money. Big cedar tree. This looks cool. ferns and stuff. Sage bush. There. I think that looks good. So we're, we're we're just under the amount of land that we needed. So we're super close. They're not going to be so so upset about it. All right. Now we need to build a shelter. So in terms of habitat, that's the one thing missing is a hard shelter. So let's formulate their habitat. So beds and shelters. I prefer simple things. Um, this is usually a pretty solid shelter. Shelter, I usually like to put at the back, and the nice thing is because the way I've set up this pen, I could put it right in here. And again, it's just, you're not bound to, to straight lines, which I think is just fascinating. Okay, it's a nice little roofed area. We need bedding, right? Because nobody likes to sleep on a floor. I'm in the habit of putting some leaves in, and I think that's really helped my bedding. So we'll see. See what happens. This won't change until I unpause it. So that's going to be a thing. Okay. So what else did we need? And now we need enrichment. So they need food enrichment and toy enrichment. 
animals like to play. So I always make sure that I find the right toys for the animal. That's important. Because why would I give them anything else? Ooh, ball. Yeah. For the ball. Uh, let's not do a sprinkler. I was going to do a sprinkler, but let's not do the sprinkler. Um, in terms of food enrichment, it's uh, presented and there's a rotation line feeder. We can do that there. I think that's pretty good. So now let's play and see. Okay, so enrichment's good in terms of shelter. Shelter is fine and everyone's happy. And because they're happy, we got people coming. So there's Planet Zoo. There's how we started a zoo. We got lots of people showing up. Everyone's happy. We got the right amount of staff. There's our wolves. Okay, that's that. That's Planet Zoo, guys. Like this is a beautiful sim. We can keep establishing and building it out and having different animals. I think that's important. But again, the conversation today was a lot about how do we use simulation in terms of making students analyze data? How do we help them with critical thinking, problem solving, making decisions? Because I have to make decisions. I had to think about where am I going to put things? How am I going to put things, right? Why do I need glass? Why is this barricade OK? Maybe it's not OK. Maybe my wolves are going to jump out and eat somebody. I'm not going to find out. But these are the things that are too crucial for students that they are not getting the opportunity for. So I, I heavily request that the people that have watched this, if you've done live or watch it later, um, start advocating for these things. Start getting some of these games in classrooms so that students can have some downtime, some time where they can just relax, where they can go and build something small, right? So that would be super important. I think that'd be super important for, for our, our students. Wolves are very vocal. That's really cool. Um, so make sure that you give these opportunities. But if you give them, don't stay on the sidelines. Don't let it just be a distractor. Don't let it be this rewarding thing. When you give students and anybody, a young person in your life, an opportunity to be on a technological device and have this entertainment in front of them, don't let it just be mindless staring at a screen. Have conversations with them. Talk to them. Talk to them how the how this works, what's happening, why it's happening, and that's super crucial. So that covers the creating a sim. We didn't get a chance to model, I'm sorry, but we did talk about modeling and how you can get animations in. Um, we didn't just do it. We'll do that sometime. Uh, and video capture, again, open broadcasting software, super huge, super awesome. Uh, that's how you can record your footage. And how do you establish your brand? Well, the first and foremost is make one. And then spread your identity any which way that you think is feasible and reasonable and also is something where you don't just shotgun it out and make everyone love you. It's just not the way it works. You have to be patient. Be, be patient. Um, brand establishment is so interesting these days. So it's one of those things that if you are interested in doing online work, that's going to be the big thing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I believe we've hit our, our time cap. I think if I keep talking, everyone's going to fall asleep because that's just the way it works. Um, for those that have definitely tuned in to watch live, you're great. For those of you that watch it later, uh, it's a long one, but it's a good one. All right? Take care out there. Thank you so much. David Brown, Brooks Composite High School, signing off.